Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Madison. We appreciate you checking it out. Today we're going to do a, a pharmacy, a medication review um, video on tramadol. And if this is interesting to you, I'll definitely let us know. We thought maybe it would be interesting to actually do a deeper dive on some of these medications that people are taking so that you all can better understand that medication and us working in healthcare can kind of do a deep dive on those medications and learn from it as well. So today we're going to do tramadol. Um, we're going to talk about what tramadol is, what it's approved for, its mechanism of action or how it works, uh, its metabolism, its excretion, its adverse effects, toxicity, uh, different ways to um, think about that toxicity, what medications it interacts with, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So with no further ado, quick 30 second break for introduction. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you right back. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing. Hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high-yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial-free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. All right, thanks for sticking around. So tramadol is a medication. Many of you out there might actually have taken it or know someone that has been taking it or is taking it right now. Um, us in healthcare, some of you may have prescribed it or seen patients on it or at least thought about it. Um, it is an FDA-approved painkiller. So it's meant to alleviate pain, and it is approved by the Food and Drug Administration for that. Um, particularly, they say for moderate or severe pain rather than mild pain. It is a class four controlled substance. As a reminder, controlled substances uh, go from kind of class one all the way down to uh, class four. Oh gosh, we're actually blanking out if there's a class five. Someone remind us in the comments. But class one being kind of the most severe and class four being obviously lower than class one, two, three, or four. With that being said, there is still addiction potential. There's still opiate uh, addiction potential. Things like benzodiazepines are in class four as well, at least some of them. So class four is still a controlled substance, which means you need a DEA license to prescribe it, which means you need to do certain things when prescribing it and when taking it. Uh, and it does have severe um, kind of addiction potential as well, um, although some people argue not as much as, as other uh, opiate or controlled substances. So we'll get into all that. So proof for pain, class four controlled substance. How does it work? This is when tramadol gets really interesting. So it's mechanism of action or how it works. It has both opiate properties and non-opiate properties. For those of you unfamiliar with this term, opiate properties are opioids, right? Things like um, morphine, Dilaudid, uh, fentanyl, the recreational drug industry would be things like heroin. Obviously, fentanyl is in the recreational drug in industry as well. These uh, part of Norco has opiates. Part of Percocets have opiates. These are really powerful medications, right? They can be used for severe pain. They can be an intravenous form, an oral form, um, and they have high, high addiction potential. All right, so tramadol has some opiate effects, but it also has non-opiate effects. Interestingly enough, some of these non-opiate effects are like serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, and nor um, adrenaline reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs. And these actually are medications that can be used for anxiety, depression. Um, so it has this combination of effects, which is not common for pain medications. And it can lead to some challenges with tramadol, which we will talk about as well. Um, so both opiate and non-opiate effects. If we draw, uh, if we go to our drawing down here, what we looked at is kind of the, a nerve junction, the presynaptic nerve and the postsynaptic nerve. And this is part of the pain pathways in nerves um, because there's excretion of certain molecules uh, and many receptors. So some of the mechanism of tramadol involves serotonin. Draw it here in the blue, okay? And serotonin is excreted by the presynaptic neuron and then affects the postsynaptic neuron. And serotonin can cause a number of different kind of, um, you know, emotions, feelings, pain, alleviation, all this kind of stuff. And SSRIs, which can be used for anxiety or depression, are serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So what typically happens is the presynaptic neuron reuptakes some of this serotonin so that there's less that is going and affecting the postsynaptic neuron, which is what causes the effects of serotonin. 
okay? But tramadol actually inhibits the reuptake of this, which then leads to more serotonin in this junction, which then leads to more serotonin going over the postsynaptic neuron and affecting it, which then leads to a more robust serotonin response. Apologies for a minute. Serotonin response, okay? In addition to that, it's an SNRI, a nor uh, adrenaline reuptake inhibitor. So the same idea, right? This presynaptic neuron usually reabsorbs some of this noradrenaline so that there's less that is affecting your postsynaptic neuron, okay? But tramadol decreases the amount of noradrenaline you're able to take up so that there's more in this junction, which then leads to more noradrenaline affecting the postsynaptic nerve, which then increases your nor Adre adrenaline response at the postsynaptic nerve, okay? So you get kind of these increases in serotonin and noradrenaline, okay? And again, those medications that are, there's dedicated medications that are just SSRIs or just SNRIs. I know things, if you've heard of things like um, Zoloft, Lexapro, per Paxil, um, all those fall in categories of SSRIs and SNRIs. Um, so these effects aren't necessarily pain specific. All right, it's kind of these non-opiate actions that have a wide-ranging effect on people uh, by increasing their serotonin and their noradrenaline, just as if they were on an SSRI or SNRI for something like anxiety or depression. In addition to that, it does have these opiate effects like we talked about. But the opiate effects of tramadol are a little tough because both tramadol, the parent compound, as well as its metabolites, okay, specifically this M1 metabolite, affect the opiate receptors, particularly the mu. This M here is mu opiate receptor. So tramadol itself, the medication, can go to this mu opiate receptor and cause an opiate effect, an analgesic effect. But when tramadol is metabolized, when it's broken down, it's broken down into a metabolite called M1, among other things. And M1 is actually a much more potent mu receptor agonist. So it has almost 700 times more potency to this opiate receptor than tramadol itself does. So you can get this robust opiate effect from the M1 metabolite as compared to the parent compound tramadol. That obviously causes, you know, an opiate effect, opiate analgesia, analgesia, just like things like morphine and Dilaudid and fentanyl and all that. Okay. Tramadol also does inhibit the GABA receptor. GABA is a receptor that is involved in benzodiazepines and alcohol use. It can be kind of this inhibitory receptor. So there is some effect on tramadol on that as well. Um, so you get some anti-GABAergic um, action. So as you can see from this, there's all these like variable mechanisms that tramadol has. And it's kind of not this pure pain medication. Right? It has serotonin effects, noradrenaline effects, opiate effects, GABA effects. All right, It accelerates serotonin release and inhibits serotonin's uptake. It inhibits the reuptake of noradrenaline. Tramadol and then its metabolite are mu opiate receptors. Uh, it inhibits GABA receptors. And one of the issues that that causes is that people have highly variable results with tramadol because it's really hard to control how much serotonin reuptake inhibitor you know, effects they're getting, how much noradrenaline effects they're getting, how much opiate effects from either the tramadol itself or you know, how much did they metabolize and how quickly to this M1 metabolite, which then has 700 times more opiate effects. So you know, some might label it a quote unquote dirty drug in that sense. In addition to that, I think people often think of tramadol as this like not opiate, that it's quote unquote better than things like, you know, Nor Norco or Percocet or kind of other pure opiate medications. And there's a little less addiction potential, but there still is addiction potential. And make no mistake, tramadol and its M1 metabolite is essentially an opiate, quote unquote, right? It affects opiate receptors. It has the same effects um, in that sense as an opiate, just in addition to kind of these other effects it has on serotonin and noradrenaline and all that kind of stuff. All right, so as we mentioned, tramadol is metabolized, 
Okay, it's metabolized to these three, among other things, but M1, M2, and M5 metabolites. And we already said this M1 metabolite has 700 times more of an effect on the opiate receptor, okay? The parent compound of tramadol, its half-life is five to six hours. So that means in about six hours, half of the tramadol is no longer circulating, okay? But half of the tramadol still is. But its metabolites actually have different half-life. So the M1 metabolite has a half-life of seven to nine hours. So even after half your tramadol is done, metabolized, it was metabolized into the M1 metabolite. And then the M1 metabolite has a half-life of seven to nine hours. So in seven to nine hours, half of M1 is gone, but half is still circulating, okay? It's metabolized in the liver. And one of the challenges that we talked about is that all people, uh, or some people can metabolize at different rates right? The CYP2D6 is the enzyme in the liver that metabolizes the tramadol 2 M1. And people have different degrees of function of these enzymes. So some people might get quick, more quick and higher amounts of M1. Some people might get lower amounts of M1. The ones who get more might have more opiate effect and get better pain control. The ones who have less might have less opiate effect and get less pain control. So again, just very unpredictable. Right? It's, you know, quote unquote dirty. It's very unpredictable for who is going to have what effects from tramadol um, because people are so variable in that. All right. In addition to that, it is renally excreted. So metabolized by the liver. So if you have liver dysfunction, that can affect how well you can metabolize it. It's renally excreted. So if you have renal dysfunction, that affects its half-life, right? If you have kidney injury, kidney failure, kidney disease, you're going to excrete it less. So the half-life is going to be prolonged because you can't get rid of it as fast as someone with normal kidney function. All right, what adverse effects are there of tramadol? And this is important because as we said, people who metabolize it differently are going to have kind of different circulating amounts, quote unquote, whether you metabolize it fast or slow, um, right? People with liver dysfunction, people with renal dysfunction, all are going to have kind of variable effects to tramadol and as such might be higher or lower risk for adverse effects. Um, the main general adverse effects that people talk about are nausea, dizziness, puritis, which is itchiness of the skin, constipation, drowsiness, and headache. In severe senses, it can cause respiratory depression, right? Opiates in general can cause respiratory depression, which is why, you know, Narcan or Naloxone is something that, um, People who abuse opiates sometimes have because they can get such bad respiratory depression that they actually can die, uh, and Narcan can reverse that for opiates. Narcan can partially work on tramadol, but not fully work just because it has so many different mechanisms. Um, and then sedation or sleepiness are two of kind of like the severe side effects. You also can get toxicity from tramadol, and toxicity with tramadol can be severe. It can cause things like seizure, cardiopulmonary collapse, liver failure, kidney failure, respiratory depression, rhabdomyolysis. But toxicity means that you kind of have taken too much of it, or maybe you have severe renal dysfunction, so too much is building up of it. Um, and overdoses of tramadol, a big thing we worry about is seizures, in addition to kind of this multi-organ failure, MOF, multi-organ failure. Another thing tramadol can cause is serotonin syndrome. For those of you in healthcare, you might have heard of serotonin syndrome. Those of you out of healthcare, hopefully you haven't, um, because if you have, it probably means because you've known someone with it. But serotonin syndrome is this conglomeration of things like fever, altered mental status, like uh, clonus, which is kind of like a beating of the feet or hands. You can get ocular clonus too. I mean, it's because you have this buildup of serotonin in your system. It can actually be deadly. It can be really, really serious. People can get really sick from it. Um, and since tramadol, as we said, has this serotonin reuptake inhibitor kind of mechanism, right? if we go back up, we said that it decreases the amount of serotonin you can reabsorb so that there's more serotonin out there affecting your nerves and you get this increased serotonin response. So if you're taking tramadol with other SSRIs, like we talked about things like Zoloft, Paxil, Lexapro are all SSRIs or other medications that have serotonergic effects, um, which there's a whole long list, all that combined can cause too much serotonin in your system and, and lead to serotonin syndrome. So it's important to remember that tramadol does have serotonergic effects and does put you at risk for serotonin syndrome. All right, the last thing we wanted to mention, which is related to adverse effects, are we said it's metabolized in the liver, right, by these different enzyme CYP 
2d6. Sip 2d6 takes tramadol and converts it to M1. Okay, so people who are taking medications that inhibit this enzyme, such as amiodarone, fluoxetine, proxetine, bupropion, right, those inhibit the CYP2D6 enzyme, which means if you inhibit it, you're going to have less M1 metabolite, which means you're going to have much less analgesic effect, okay, because you're going to have less opiate action because that M1 metabolite has a 700 time higher affinity for the opiate receptor than tramadol itself, okay? This is in comparison to CYP3A4. CYP3A4 decreases the metabolism of tramadol in general. So if you inhibit that, it's going to increase the amount of tramadol circulating in your system because you can't metabolize, like can't break it down to get it out of the system, which is actually going to lead to more M1 because there's more tramadol circulating for the CYP2D6 to convert into M1. Okay, and more M1 could lead to increased analgesic effect, but also all those side effects of opiates, such as respiratory depression, sedation, confusion, and even overdose and addiction. Um, so things like erythromycin, ketoconazole, ritonavir, which is actually in Paxlovid, um, among other antivirals, can inhibit this enzyme, increase the amount of tramadol circulating, and then increase your M1, causing those downstream effects. So, you know, uh, hopefully we, we didn't show our bias too much. Um, certainly we don't work in a specialty that is prescribing tramadol, such as the outpatient uh, world. So we, we definitely defer to them. And uh, some people probably get great relief from tramadol. Some people probably don't. Um, but I do think it's important to, to understand that there are kind of these multiple pathways that tramadol works. Um, and everyone is kind of affected differently by those pathways. And as such, it can be a difficult drug to kind of understand how it's going to affect someone um, when you're starting and you got to be real careful. And it does have opiate effects. It does have serotonergic effects. It does have noradrenaline effects. Um, it does have GABAergic effects, among other things. So let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. If you're taking tramadol or know someone that has, we'd love to hear your experience. Uh, if you're working in healthcare, we'd love to know your thoughts on tramadol as a medication in general. Um, so definitely let us know in the comments. Um, for those interested, we... Um, We'll post these notes on our Patreon page and put our follow-up question there as well as any discussion. Um, so certainly check out that Patreon page. And if you're willing and able, we'd love for you to join that Patreon community. Uh, no further ado, stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.